What's up everyone? My name's Mitch. Thank you so much for checking out this video. So today, we're gonna be talking all about intermittent fasting. But before we get started, as always, there'll be timestamps here at the beginning of the video, so feel free to jump around to whatever interests you the most. So today's video will be broken down into several parts. Part one will be what exactly is intermittent fasting? Part two will be diving into some of the science behind intermittent fasting. In particular, what happens to your body during the fed and fasted states? More on that later. Part three, we'll be discussing the benefits of intermittent fasting. Part four will cover some potential problems or drawbacks. And then last, we'll talk about some of my overall thoughts about intermittent fasting. So let's get to it. So what is intermittent fasting? Intermittent fasting or time restricted eating is an eating plan where you have a specific window of time that you don't eat and then you have a smaller window of time that you do eat. And there's actually several ways to do this. Some of these include eating one meal a day, alternate day fasting, fasting once a week. But the most common way to do intermittent fasting is actually cycled in a 24 hour time frame. Most people fast for about 16 hours and then eat in about an eight hour window or some people fast for about 20 hours and then eat in about a four hour window, you get the point. But before we move on, I think it's important to say that intermittent fasting is not a form of starvation, unless you just don't eat for like a straight month. Anyways, that's beside the point. During the fasted state, you actually use energy that's stored in your body. More on that in a minute. When you starve or enter into a period of starvation, you actually run out of that stored energy in your body and your body begins breaking down vital things such as organs. So just a point of clarification, moving on. So let's talk a little bit about what's going on in your body when you eat something. This is also called the fed state. And then we can talk about what happens in your body when you don't eat something for a prolonged period of time. This is also called the fasted state. So for the fed state, or whenever you eat some food, your body breaks down the food into glucose, which is the main energy source for your body. Anything that's left over is transferred into one of the energy stores in your body. So there are two main forms of stored energy in your body. They are glycogen, which is stored in the liver, and fats, which is stored in adipose tissue, or the fat in your body, or those rolls that you can't get rid of. So during the fasted state, or whenever you don't eat food for a prolonged period of time, those glycogen stores are turned into glucose, which is then used throughout the rest of your body. On average, it takes about 10 to 20 hours to fully use up these glycogen stores. However, if you're active at all, you can use up these glycogen reserves much more quickly. Once those glycogen storages have been depleted, your body taps into those energy stores in the adipose tissue. These fats from the adipose adipose tissue are converted into ketones in the liver via beta oxidation. Whoa, big word. The name's not important. These ketones are used throughout the body as additional metabolic fuel. So let's rewind it back for a second. A quick recap of the fasted state. Whenever you don't eat something for a prolonged period of time, your body will first burn through those glycogen stores. When those run out, your body then burns fat in order to get sufficient energy. However, there is a final point that I'd like to make. In the fasted state, particularly during prolonged exercise, your body will break down muscle tissue into amino acids, which are the building blocks of proteins and use those for energy as well. The mechanism by which this occurs isn't really important, but the concept is. This is why it is absolutely essential to replenish those amino acids by eating enough protein during your eating timeframes. You want to do this so your body doesn't have to keep breaking down muscles. We don't want that. We just want abs because summer is quickly approaching and I'm kind of freaking out a little bit. Anyways, moving on to the benefits. So I will say this right off the bat. Most of the super beneficial things that we've seen from intermittent fasting has really only primarily been researched in rats. However, the results are promising. 
So just a quick summary of one of the major studies. So the scientists took a bunch of rats and didn't allow them to eat anything for a 16 hour period. And then for the other eight hours, they pretty much allowed them to eat whatever they wanted. And the end result is that all of these rats pretty much couldn't gain weight. The scientist also discovered that during the period of fasting, these rats became extremely efficient at burning fat. It is important to say though, that a 16 hour fast for a rat is not quite the same as a 16 hour fast for a human because our metabolisms obviously differ just a little bit. So that's why it's not quite clear if these benefits could easily translate to humans. Some other benefits include reduction of inflammation, increased production of neurotrophic factors, which actually stimulate a process called neurogenesis. This is a process that supports the overall growth and survival of neurons. Other things include optimum levels of hormones in your body, increased autophagy, which is the removal of cellular waste, and overall better weight loss. And this is likely to occur for two reasons. One is giving someone a narrow window in which they can eat ultimately induces caloric restriction by simply eating less food. And two, fasting can actually have an appetite blunting effect after the initial switch from normal eating patterns to intermittent fasting. So what are some potential drawbacks or even problems with intermittent fasting? Well, there's no hard set rule of what intermittent fasting is. Like I said before, there's several options out there. So it makes creating scientific studies very difficult because the fasting period can vary so much. Also, there's possible side effects that you can get from intermittent fasting. These are things like headaches, heart heartburn and fatigue, just to name a few things. Also, intermittent fasting can be dangerous, especially if you have a pre-existing medical condition. And last, there's really no long-term studies out there that follow those who intermittently fast for years and can accurately predict specific outcome measures. So what are my overall thoughts about intermittent fasting? Well, I do think there's promising medical research and a lot of benefits seen so far. So I would say give it a try yourself and see how you feel. However, I would be wary on trying intermittent fasting for prolonged periods of time due to the lack of unstudied research for long-term outcomes. So one last thing, before you start intermittent fasting, please visit your local healthcare provider so you can make sure that intermittent fasting is safe for you. As always, thank you all so much for checking out this video. If you're interested in more content like this, please hit that like button and subscribe so you never miss a video. If you give intermittent fasting a try for the first time, please leave a comment down below and let me know how your journey is. Again, thank you so much for sticking with me to the end of this video and I'll catch you all on the next one.